Hello, my friends. Welcome to Women of Worth Wednesday. I am Gaitlin Condi. I am your host and producer of this weekly show on High Five Live. Please share where you're watching live from today. I am so grateful to be sharing this message and this experience with you today from my home office. I'm wearing my Trust God and Chill t-shirt because it goes exactly with the theme that of this message I wanted to share. I've mentioned this experience, you'll see from the title, 40 Days of Itching, um, but I've never publicly told the details behind this experience. And as I was praying and prepping for this uh, message today last week, the Lord said, now's the time to go deep about this experience and what I learned, especially within the context of this COVID-19 pandemic. At the time of this taping, if you're catching it within 2020, you are very aware of what's happening. If you find this video much later, I don't know what the world's going to be like. I don't know what situations the Lord will be allowing his children to experience so that we can learn, prepare for the second coming. But at this time, it is the middle of May 2020, and we have been experiencing this global pandemic for a couple of months now. You know, um, it's changed our work situation, our family situations, uh, completely changed some economics for people and health. Schooling has changed for our children. My daughter is uh, finishing her sophomore year online and that's changed everything. My work schedule, my professional life has changed. I do a lot of public speaking and all of that has canceled or rescheduled or converted to Zoom or StreamYard or some virtual platform, which I love that we have that technology, but I miss the, the being with people. I very much have worked the last six years to develop a spiritual muscle where the spirit works with me and, and directs my messages. And so when I can't see my audience, it changes that experience for me. So whatever the changes, the stressors, the challenges, um, I've been practicing a lot of trusting God and chilling the last couple of months. I've been practicing a lot of surrender when normals keep changing when um, sometimes groceries aren't available or um, the stress of having, I have a college age son who's working from home during the day. He may walk in at any moment. He's processing relief loans. And so he's here for 10 hours, which is different. My husband is working sometimes at home and like many of you has taken a cut and pay and we're all adjusting. And so one of the things that I have really suggested when I've been able to do TV and media and radio and podcasting during this time is to look back and reflect on a time in our lives where we've had a hard time and where we've survived some things because I don't know about you but I've never gone through a pandemic and the first few <laughs> the first few weeks I kept saying to my child who is at home full time I don't know the answer to that question because I've never done this before and so the vulnerability is high for all of us right we're all trying to figure out new normals and what is normal and what is getting back to normal look like when really young women's camps are canceled and trips are canceled and work may be shut down so is that really getting back to normal and how long will this be and what will next school year be like so I hope to share a message from a very personal experience that I want to share with you. A couple of years ago, I had the great blessing and opportunity to go to the Middle East, and I'm going to be very vague about what that experience was because I want to protect everyone that was involved. I was able to go and present at a at a combined multi-country uh, conference. And it was the great joy of my life. It was an experience like I had never had. I've given over a thousand speaking events, presented all over the world, but this was unlike anything I had done before. I'd never traveled to that type part of the world before. And I was grateful my husband got to accompany me. It was a very long flight and it was three days of speaking and then basically getting back on a plane and coming home. And for those of you that are familiar with my story and, and have gone on this journey of Women of Worth Wednesday with me the last few years, you know I've spoken often of, of 
uh, lupus and that chronic illness experience of stewardship and teaching that I've had. So I'm very aware of my health and I do a lot of self-care and preventative care and, and I really work on um, trying to take care of this stewardship, my body, so that I can serve the Lord. That's really what I try to do. And so I knew that it was going to be taxing on me. But I've also come to know that the Lord has blessed me and strengthened me. Sorry, I didn't expect to get emotional already. To serve him and he's promised me through my patriarchal blessing the help and strength to do my mission I came to earth to do. So I have a lot of people say like, how do you keep the schedule of doing TV and radio and speaking and writing books and all of that? And I say no to a lot, but I say yes to a lot. And it's because I've been promised that the Lord will consecrate my effort and he would help me have the health and strength to do what I came to earth to do. And I very much believe that what I came to earth to do was to be a mother and a wife and a speaker and an author and to be a primary teacher right now of valiant nine kids. I love them. And so when I found myself preparing for this trip, I surrendered a lot of my fear. So we go on this amazing adventure and I have some very sacred experiences that only God and I and my husband probably know because we've been very quiet about that experience. Um, and that's to protect the Christians in that area of the world. And I came home, I got through the jet lag, I unpacked, I kind of got back to normal. A few weeks passed, almost a month passed. And all of a sudden, I was in California speaking at an event. And on my way that day, I was supposed to speak to a dental association in Salt Lake and then get on a plane and go to California to speak. And I started to itch. And I was itching everywhere. There's not a crevice, piece of skin, area, ear, back of my neck, arms, legs, between my toes, bottom of my feet. That was sometimes the worst started to itch and I thought that's interesting I don't think I've I don't think I've had um itching like this before and I honestly I didn't give it much thought because I do deal with a lot of physical pain on a very regular basis the last 20 years and so it's become a companion to me and so I can push through some physical stuff pretty easily um just because I've grown some some tolerance to uh, chronic pain and so I go and give this address to the dental association you guys let me just be honest with you I made a bad wardrobe choice that day I wore um, I wore a jumper and the women that have worth that are watching this understand uh, okay jumpers when you're itching like your back and anyways it's cumbersome so I didn't feel like that was my best speaking presentation for this dental association and um but i did my best and i got on a plane and it was really uncomfortable and i was staying with my mom in california for the speaking event there and you know so grateful i was with my mom because i didn't have to hold it together um but i was struggling and it was painful and i started to get nauseous and it just kept escalating and escalating to the point that i couldn't sleep and I was bleeding all over from itching because you itch involuntarily. Like I didn't wake myself up, but I was woken up itching all night. And soon there were little cuts all over my arms and legs where they were starting to bleed because I would be itching in the middle of the night. And the nausea was increasing and I was getting tired because now I've gone through two nights of not sleeping and itching. My son's pulling into the driveway, so he may wave when he walks by my office because I'm right by the front door. Um, anyways, I go to speak at this event, and uh, the Lord sustained me. As I stood at the pulpit, I prayed, help me not itch while I stand here. And I was able to do that, but I was wearing thick tights so no one could see my legs and all the, all the scabs and bleeding. And I was hurried out of that event because I was just not feeling well. And I went home, I called my doctor, I was with my mom, 
and I started to, it increased and my skin started to change colors and it was not, obviously not good. So we made arrangements for, there's my son, we made arrangements for, um, we made arrangements for me to go home earlier than planned. And for the next, I'm going to fast forward for the next 40 days, we ran blood tests and the itching didn't stop. I pretty much didn't sleep for about 40 days. And I had a number of speaking events. I had TV during that time. I wore long sleeves so people wouldn't notice and it was in May. And so that was a little odd. Um, even though I'm wearing a long sleeve jacket right now because it's cold today in May in Utah. And um, uh, the yellow in my skin got worse and the liver, my liver enzymes were bad. So something was happening to my liver and the doctors were consulting about what to put me on some pretty severe um, chemo like medicine, which I've done before for my lupus. And so I was very familiar with the side effects of that. And I was discouraged. I was tired. And um, it was obvious something was really wrong. We weren't sure if it was lupus, if it was a virus I had picked up in the Middle East. Um, to this day, we're not 100% sure, but my liver's enzymes were showing signs that my liver was not doing well and the itching wasn't stopping. It wasn't subsiding. And I, um, I'm going to just share there were some pretty dark nights because what happens after a couple of weeks of not sleeping, you young moms know this, um, you start to go a little crazy. And I um, continued with my schedule and my, my public appearances and all of those things, but I was not on my A game. And I had a lot of conversations with my heavenly father at two in the morning. <laughs> And I had a number of blessings and I'm sharing this honestly with you because I share on this show and you have come to know High Five Live and Women of Worth where we share um, experiences and stories of faith because we believe that God is aware of his children and he's mindful of us. And I believe that and I have declared that here with you, my trusted Women of Worth Wednesday friends. But... I'm going to be honest that there were a number of blessings that said I would stop itching and that I would feel better and I would heal quickly. And that didn't happen. Now, I understand that quickly for the Lord and quickly for us is sometimes completely different, right? But it tested me and I would plead with the Lord in the middle of the night, especially that I could just sleep for a few minutes without itching and waking up. And we tried all the topical creams and before I get messages about all the different things, we tried everything, chamomile baths, oils, um, prescription level creams. We tried over the counter, under the counter, <laughs> all the stuff and nothing was relieving it. Nothing, literally nothing was. About 20 days into this experience, at two in the morning, I was pleading with the Lord, like, Heavenly Father, I just want to serve you, and I can't think straight anymore, you know? And I don't have answers, and I don't know what to do, and I didn't feel good about going on these really severe drugs that they were suggesting, because they weren't even sure if that would work. And, um, and I just was pleading. I was pleading with the Lord. Have you had that experience before? where you're just like, whatever you want to tell me to do, I will do at this point. That's where I was at. Like, if the Lord had said, go dip yourself seven times, right, Naaman? If you go do this, you will be healed of leprosy. I would have done that. I would have done the very simplest of promptings, and I heard nothing. And then all of a sudden, as I was crying out to the Lord, I said, Heavenly Father, if you're, if you're not going to take this away, strengthen me so that I can still do the work I came to do and be the best self I can be for my family. And I heard, uh, this is your Liberty Jail experience. 
it will go 40 days. And I had been told in a blessing the first week of this that it would be like a Liberty Jail experience. So that was a connection to what I had already been told in one of my other blessings. And I think that's significant as we're going through things that we don't understand and we don't know how long they're going to be because wilderness experiences are that. We don't always know. We're not prepared with all the tools that we need. If you think about the wilderness journeys in the scriptures, that's how they are framed. For the children of Israel, it's 40 years. And for Lehites, the Lehi family, it was almost eight years in the wilderness, right? And we we hear the, the journey of the Zenith people and the Jaredites. Like the quality of a wilderness experience is that we don't know how it's going to go. And we don't know how long it's going to be. And it's a change of our circumstances. And it pushes us to a place of living on and relying on solely God, right? And I think many of us are feeling that with this COVID experience right now. And so when I heard this, it would go 40 days, I immediately thought of my Savior. I thought of the 40 days he spent in the wilderness as he prepared for his, his ultimate sacrifice for us. And the adversary tempted him, tempted him with pride, tempted him with food because he was fasting, tempted him with glory and fame. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have really pondered on that and how the adversary tries to tempt me. The nausea was almost getting worse than the itching. I almost think I started to become familiar with the feeling of the itching. Um, it wasn't fun. It still kept waking me up and causing exhaustion, but I didn't even know what to eat. And that brought up for me some really old trauma with chemotherapy and things I had done in the past for my lupus. And so I, I I had a whirlwind of symptoms and emotions and, and it was pushing me to some dark places. I think you guys can understand this, right? You can relate to this experience. And I remember thinking, Holy Father, I don't even know what to pull from. I don't even know what to do in this situation. I don't even know how to figure this out. And then that was the moment. It was almost halfway through the experience that I heard the 40 days. And for some reason, I just trusted that and held that. And that helped. I can do 20 more days of this. I'm going to trust the blessing that I had, that there was a Liberty Jail experience within this. And I studied the Liberty Jail experience for Joseph Smith. And I thought of his learning and what he said. I love what he said, uh, um, Elder Rich, Bishop Richard Edgley, who was my father-in-law who has passed one of his dear high school buddies um, spoke at his funeral. Anyways, Bishop Edgley talked about this Liberty jail experience. And he, he said um, about Joseph Smith, as Joseph Smith cried out to the Lord, he wondered how long this was going to go. And he wondered, oh, God, where art thou? This is DNC 121.1. The Lord comforted him with these words, Know thou, my son, that all these things shall give thee experience and shall be for thy good. And Richard Edgley says this, Bishop Edgley says, How difficult it is and painfully foreign it may seem to find the good out of our personal tragedy and suffering. How inconsistent with the words for thy good they may seem. And I remember thinking that many times. And maybe you're in the middle of your own Liberty Jail wilderness experience right now. And you're thinking, this can't be for my good. But I took that little prompting from the Spirit. And like all promptings, in hindsight, they, they become clearly a prompting. In the middle of them, you're like, ah, is that me? Is that the Lord? Right? And as Elder Bednar has invited us, assume it's the Lord. Instead of worrying if it's the Spirit, be aware of what we do to step out of the flow of the spirit. And so I believed that that was a prompting and I put it on a shelf and I continued for the next 20 days. To plead for whatever I was to learn for my good that I would learn it. And whatever that was, 
Was it getting rid of pride? Was it not being encumbered about by the world because I had to be really careful about what I was doing with my energy because I had very little energy at the time? All those personal tutorings that happen when we're in a wilderness experience. And my friends, I'm going to be really honest with you. I, I didn't hyper-focus on the calendar. I wasn't like, I wasn't taking my pin and like, oh, day 21, day 22, day 23. Okay, day 30, we're almost there. I didn't. I had received the blessing saying this was my Liberty Jail experience. And in that Liberty Jail experience, Joseph Smith was not able to show up the way he valued as the prophet of God. He wasn't leading his family or the church because he was in this rat-infested, disgusting, um, damp jail cell with his friends. And he was struggling physically, emotionally, and mentally. And from that Liberty Jail experience came some of the most beautiful revelation in the DNC. And so I kept that in mind, that part of what made Liberty Jail hard and a jail experience was because Joseph could not show up the way I believe he knew he was sent to earth to show up. And for all of us, part of our stress and our struggles and our trials is that we can't show up in the way we want when our marriage is struggling, when we have a child dealing with addiction, when depression is kicking us to the bed every day, uh, when our chronic illness or our cancer diagnosis or our infertility or whatever that is, is blocking what we see we came to earth to do. Our mission has changed because of this Liberty Jail experience. And so my friends, I tried to keep that in mind. And I tried to keep surrendering that God was changing me and I didn't know how, and I didn't see it. And I didn't know if it was even blessing me. I just kept trying to praise him, and that didn't mean I loved it, but I kept trying to trust him that I had enough manna for the day, not for the next day, just for that day, and sometimes that hour, and I did that and did that and did that, and it was exhausting, and I didn't always know where the hand of God was in my life to bless me, and then one day I woke up and I didn't itch. Now, I'm going to say something right towards the end of this experience, this wilderness experience, I would have hours where I would stop itching. And there's various theories from my doctor about what was happening there. I consulted with the doctor about what might be happening and why. So I would have relief for an hour or two towards the end, and I didn't get too excited. I didn't even tell my husband. I went a whole day without itching. I didn't tell anyone. I went a second day without itching and the nausea was starting to go away and I didn't tell anyone. On the third day, my husband said, Hey, cause poor guy. I mean, I was itching all night. So that's fun. You know, for sharing your room with someone. <laughs> and he said, I, you haven't been itching. And I said, this is day three. At that point I went to my calendar and I did the math. And the day I stopped itching was exactly 40 days. Now, I want to end this message before it gets too much longer. I would love to tell you that there was some, like, amazing thing that came out of that. Like, I didn't write a best-selling novel from that experience. I didn't ever really, really clarify exactly the diagnosis of what virus or what, what issue was going on. Um, and I, I can't honestly tell you that I feel like I spiritually like grew and I advanced and I gained some scriptural knowledge and I used that time to like, you know, spend more time in the temple. No, friends. Sometimes when we're surviving, we are thriving. Sometimes we're just chopping wood and carrying water. And maybe you're having days like that Groundhog Day where it's like you're still in your yoga pants. Your kids are trying to finish online schooling. You're not even sure if they're going to pass. You're trying to pay the bills. And one day is meshing into the other. And then your friends are like learning how to make sourdough bread during the COVID-19 crisis. And they're training through a marathon. And they're doing all this family history or whatever. And you're not. I'm going to honestly tell you guys, I don't have some great thing at the end to say, and this is why 
it was for my good. What I will tell you is this. It didn't make sense. It didn't feel good. It was hard. I heard God in it and he strengthened me. He enabled me to go through the burden. He didn't remove it. And for me, I still don't with my spiritual eyes see all the things that happened. I do know that every time, as Bishop Edgley said, God asks us to go through a 40-day wilderness experience, we are being transformed. It is always for our good. God is in COVID-19 and in a divorce. He is in an eating disorder and in an addiction. He allows us our agency, but he shows up. I didn't realize until recently that Moses also went up to the mount and did not eat for 40 days. Twice he went 40 days to prepare and receive the Ten Commandments, the tablets. And so maybe we can reframe this experience we're having globally. It's messy. It's Groundhog Day. It's confusing. We don't think we're always our best self. We're itching. We're nauseous. We're frustrated. We're irritated. I'm going to invite us all to maintain hope in knowing that, as it says in DNC 121, that all of these experiences will be for our good. It doesn't say all these experiences will be fun like Disneyland. It says all those experiences Joseph had in Liberty Jail will be for his ultimate good. And that's my testimony today. Thank you for sticking with me, those of you that have stayed the whole 26 minutes of this message. Um, I'm grateful I'm not itching anymore. I'm grateful I'm not nauseous anymore. I'm grateful my liver enzymes return to their normal levels and I don't have yellow skin and yellow eyes. And I'm grateful that the Lord taught me by, by that experience that with him, once again, I can do something that doesn't make sense, that doesn't seem purposeful, and I don't know how long it's going to go, and it will be for my good because I learned more about the voice of God in my life during that. That's what I know for sure. And I'm using that experience now while I'm going through this with you, uh, something that doesn't always make sense, something that doesn't seem to have a clear end in sight, something that doesn't feel comfortable. I'm using those same spiritual muscles and I'm trying to use them today and grow them more through this so that I, with you, can be prepared for the Savior to come and that we will all be prepared through a loving Heavenly Father for whatever we're called to do in ushering in the second coming. Because I know we're going to have tighter days. We're going to have harder experiences. And I, I, I know that if we stick together as families of faith, whether you're single or married, or if High Five Live is your family, um, that we can strengthen one another. So thank you for joining me here. Thank you for being a part of High Five Live and Women of Worth and sharing your faith and your messages and your comments. And thank you for your examples to all of us on this team. We This is why we do this. And man, during the last few months, it's been such a great experience to see a bigger community grow because we're all online more. So I hope this blesses one of you, just one of you. If one of you is going through a 40-day of itching experience right now, hope on, as Elder Holland said. Hope on, because your miracle is coming. And I leave that with you today and my love. Thanks for seeing uh, the best in me, and I see it right back, the best in you. <laughs>